if you have paper and a pen, perhaps you need to pull it out. Because I want to speak about something that we have to know. So when I speak about how important prayer is, you will really understand what I am trying to say. Prayer is extremely important. Extremely. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. So when I say prayer changes things, <laughs> it really changes things. It really does. And God said, let us make men in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So as you can see here, I have highlighted some words. You may see that dominion is highlighted and and over all the earth so you may say what does dominion mean let's look it up dominion sovereignty control so this is saying god has given us control over the earth and god said let us make men in our image after our likeness so God made us in his image so from what I understand of this we should look like God and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea so we have control over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air so we have control over the birds and over the cattle so we have control over cattle and over all the earth. So we have control over the whole earth. And as you can see here, it says, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So in general, whether you serve God or not, whether you sin or not, God has given you control over this world, this earth. So what does that mean? Now, does this say that God has given demons dominion over this earth? It does not say that. Does this say that God has given angels dominion over this earth? It does not say that. It does not say that. It says, and God said, let us make men in our image. So this is basically the power that God has given women and men, humans. So demons, angels, don't have dominion over this world it says that humans does so how are demons able to work or create chaos in this world obviously if demons don't have dominion over this world but they are able to come to this world and create chaos, that means that demons have to work through a human. <laughs> I don't know if this makes sense to you. In order for a demon to do anything on this earth, they have to work through a person. So when you are praying, 
asking God to change this, change that, help me in this area, bind and cast this demon and stuff like that. What are you doing? You are using your control, the dominion that God has given you, asking God to intervene on this earth on your behalf. What are witches and people of the occult doing? They are praying to demons, asking them, telling them to intervene on matters of this earth. Because a demon would not be able to do the things that they are doing now unless they are working with or through a human being. Because as we read here, demons don't have dominion over this world. Let me say this, when you sin, when you have sex before marriage, when you have sex with someone that is married that you are not married to, when you are cursing people out, doing things that are wrong, demons are able to work through you in this world. So when I say to pray, this is the reason why we need to pray more. Because we are allowing God to help us since, since God has given us dominion over this world, we have to ask God to help us in this world. Why? Because there are, my Lord, there are witches and stuff like that praying, helping demons curse other humans. And it makes no sense. How can you help entities that hate each other, that hate you, and you are helping them defeat your brother and sister? If Adam and Eve were the first two people on earth, that means that we came from them. So if we came from Adam and Eve, we all are brothers and sisters. And you are allowing demons to hurt your brothers and sisters. My Lord. Let's go to Exodus 22 and 18. This is the Old Testament here. And I want to put things in context. Witches, people of the occult, are our problem. And the way that we fight back against this is by prayer, fasting, reading our Bibles, so on and so on. Let's go to Exodus 22 and 18. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Thou should not... Now, back in the Old Testament, back in the nation of Israel, or with the children of Israel... I guess I can say the nation of Israel. Back then, let's read it. Thou should not suffer a witch to live. Now back then, they would kill witches. Why? Because that is how demons were able to operate on this world through a human. I know that some people watch Harry Potter and other witchcraft films and stuff like that and believe that witchcraft is not real or it is fake and stuff like that. No, this stuff is real. This is the reason why they were killing witches back then. And it just, like I said, it just blows my mind that people would call upon demons to hurt other people. When demons... I always say that you are going to reap what you sow. When you are cursing people through demons, what do you believe is going to happen to you? You are going to be cursed too. And... On this earth, 
the law of reaping and sowing is forever. So even if you are in sin, even if you are a Christian, the law of reaping and sowing goes for everyone. So whatever you do is going to come back to you. I am not saying that in these times now, if you find a witch, what you should do is kill them. I am not saying that because things have changed. What we should do when we find out that a person is a witch, what we should do is pray for them. Ask God to change them, not kill them. We are in the time of grace now. So when people do silly, foolish things like that, we can't just kill them and have no pity for them. And I have been learning, and I don't know if it is the case for everyone that is a witch or goes into the occult, but many times when people go into witchcraft, usually as a child, they get abused, molested, raped, or some type of traumatic thing happens to them and they blame God for it. So what they do, they go into witchcraft and hurt other people. But you are hurting yourself at the same time. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and all and over all the earth this is why we need to pray we are telling god yes you have given us control over this world but i am giving you my control how can i say this right i have control over this world but God, even though that you have given me control, I want you to intervene on my behalf. So if more than one person prays to God and you can agree with those people, the more people that pray, the better it is. So if you get a group of 20 or 50 and you all are all praying about the same things, I'm telling you, that is a lot more powerful. This is why... I tell people, yes, it is okay to ask me to pray for you, that is fine, but if we all can pray at the same time, it does not really have to be at the same time, but if we all can pray about the same issues, it is a lot more powerful other than sitting back doing what you want to do and calling upon people to pray for you while you are not praying at all. That is crazy. We have control over this world. What some crazy humans do, they give their power to demons. Hey, I have power to do what I want with this world, so let me call upon demons so they can hurt other humans because some humans hurt me. But that is going to curse you in the end, which many people don't see that. When you build covenants with demons and you go out cursing people because you have dominion over this earth so when you give power over to demons calling upon demons to work on your behalf you are partaking in that so when you are a partaker of that of that curse to those other people you are going to be cursed as well I don't know if you understand that. So no matter what happened to you, molestation, rape, whatever else, when you call upon demons, worse things are going to happen to you. So what should you do? Hey, forgive your enemies, repent of your sins, and learn more of God. Not go to the dark side and harm other people that is insanity we have dominion over this world so when you pray what are you doing you are asking god to work on your behalf 
Demons can't function on this world unless a human allows them to. Because demons don't have control over this world. Demons have control over hell. So when you go to hell, <laughs> that's it. But the only way a demon can function on this world is if a human allows it to. Unless you are sinning and stuff like that. So a demon must work through a human host with either a sacrifice, sin, or something like that. But if you are not sinning or calling upon demons, how can a demon work through or work in this world? They would not be able to, why? Because they have no dominion, they have no control, they have no power in this world, unless you give it to them. So when you find out a person is a witch, pray for them. It's, it is okay for you to ask me to pray for you, but what you should do is pray for yourself. Yes, me praying for you is going to do good, but imagine you praying and I am praying for an issue. That is more power. So don't weigh down on women and men of God by asking them to pray for you when you can ask them, hey, I am going to pray for myself, but I want you to help me pray as well so we can bond together as one and be a lot more powerful. It is better to ask that than for you not to pray at all, but ask other people to pray for you. That is wrong. It is a lot more powerful for all of us to pray, even if you believe that you are a weak prayer. Do it anyways. We have control. So if you have a friend that is a witch or something like that, you need to talk to that person, male witch, woman witch, whatever type of witch, you need to talk to that person to stop them from doing what they are doing because ultimately they are going to curse themselves more. Yes, they may have been traumatized, but they continue. If they continue doing what they are doing, they are going to be cursed even more. Think about that. On a scale one through 10, if a person says, hey, you are going to be traumatized or cursed in a particular way. So on a scale one through 10, one being the lowest and 10 being the highest, what level would you want to be cursed at? Well, a person with sense would say, hey, first of all, I don't want to be cursed, but if I have to be cursed, let me be cursed at a level one. Let me not be cursed at a level 10. But when you call upon demons or casting spells and stuff like that, you know that stuff is going to come back to you. This is why I made another video about when you pray for people, don't pray for bad things to happen to people because when you pray about bad things to happen to people, it is going to come back to you. Why? Because the law of reaping and sowing. So when you pray asking God to bless people and do good things for people what is going to happen the law of ribbing the law of reaping and sowing so what you are praying about for people it is going to come back upon you i pray that makes sense whatever you put out is going to come back let's say that I am putting out this pen. I am trying to make this really simple. Let's say that I am putting out this pen. So I am putting out this pen. Well, from the law of reaping and sowing, this pen have to come back to me. Let's say that I am putting out this toenail clipper. 
from the law of reaping and sowing, this toenail clipper have to come back to me. Whatever I put out, the evil I put out, that evil would have to come back to me. The good that I put out, that good would have to come back to me. Whatever I put out, it have to come back to me. So if you are, my Lord, if you are a witch or something and you believe that you can do all of this evil and nothing is going to come back to you, that is foolish. We have control over this world because God has given it to us. So why allow demons? Why give your power to demons? Because it is going to hurt you in the end. And I believe too that demon that you are working with now turns on you. Because there is no good trait in a demon. So why would a demon be loyal to you? Think about that. Why would a demon be loyal to you? When demons hate other demons, demons hate Satan. But for some reason, you believe that a demon is loyal to you or a demon loves you. Think about that. Okay, God bless.